The Chinese government's military is so corrupt right now that the nuclear missiles that they have don't have fuel in them. They have water. Because people, generals, Private Jay Snuffy, decided, you know what? We're never gonna shoot these things off that much and people don't really check them and we're so poor and in need of money. Let's just siphon out all the fuel from these nuclear missiles and just uh, fill it up with water so there's still liquid in there. We should be fine. A couple months ago, some Navy seamen got arrested for sending sensitive and classified documents to the People's Republic of China. Well, their military, that is. That's right. You know, some Navy guy just decided to send some secret documents over to China and become a complete and utter traitor to the United States. What could go wrong? Any hoozy, what are these losers? Zhao here, and hey, everybody should look at his face. Look at him, there he is, there's Zhao. There's a guy that gave up his entire United States citizenship and his military service to throw all of his buddies under the bus and sell documents to the Chinese military. Bad job, bad, bad job. Well, we've got more information on what exactly happened and his charges. And let's break that down. See, Zhao here, throughout the months of August 2021 through May 2023, received $15,000 in 14 individual payments after giving the Chinese government a whole bunch of sensitive documents regarding the United States Navy. And $15,000 in 14 payments, she sounds like a car loan. Who is the Chinese national government just Venmoing teenagers $1,000 every couple of months to make sure that they can hand over a couple cool documents with a military letterhead on it? Now I know what you're thinking. How in the world can I protect myself from somebody trying to steal my information if the federal government can't do it for themselves? NordVPN, that's how. With NordVPN, you can become safer online with just one simple click. Nord is the fastest VPN on the planet and it can protect you from an unlimited amount of threats. Like a man in the middle tech. Like when you're traveling at an airport and you see, oh, airport Wi-Fi but it's not actually airport Wi-Fi. That's somebody trying to steal your information. Phishing, all those emails that say you've won a prize or some random account that isn't me saying I got you a PS4, but you need to pay for the shipping. Password attacks, malvertising and ransomware. DDoS attacks, which is when a high volume of data gets flooded to your IP address, making your internet useless. But besides computer protection, it can also help you in entertaining you while you're on the move. Say you want to watch a specific series on Netflix, but it's not available in the US. Well, it could be available at a proxy server out in the UK. And that can help you in shopping. Just look at the change in prices when you look at car rentals, hotels, and flights without using a VPN. You could be saving hundreds of dollars on your vacations. To find out more, click the link below at nordvpn.com slash angrycops, and you can get an additional four months for free if you sign up for their two-year plan. Now, what did Zhao actually send the Chinese government? What you, he sent documents, but what, they, what were they about? Well, Zhao sent a whole bunch of documents about a large-scale training event in the Asian Pacific. And I don't know if you've heard, but China, China. has been threatening to uh, invade Taiwan for the past couple while now. And, and I would think as the Chinese government, understanding the war gaming the United States is doing and trading with other nations in the area would be a little bit of a big help to give me an idea of what might happen should I China. invade Taiwan. What to expect exactly? So yeah, these that training, yeah, we were train how you fight. So we're kind of just tell them how we fight. Not a good look, Zhao. No, but what else? What else could he possibly be giving him that would be make such a ruckus, right? How about some electrical diagrams and blueprints for the ground and air radar systems in Okinawa, Japan, where we have some military posts? Wouldn't that sound great? Wouldn't you love for the Chinese government to know how our radar works at posts where our military service members are stationed? That would be, that sounds like that's very safe. Now in layman's terms, if you don't really understand the threat with the radar, let me break it down for you. There is a military post in Okinawa, Japan. Now let's say if China wanted to send some missiles, to, you know, blow up and attack that target, us, the US military service members, in Okinawa, Japan. Well, our radar systems would go beep, 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 and CFRAM, RAM, whatever RAM, shoot them down or send a Patriot missile up there to intercept it. But that's only because our radar is bing, 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 picking it up. Some would say that's a big deal because now if China knows how those work, well, they could create a missile or some sort of jamming device to defeat that radar or get around that radar. And now you've legitimately put US military service members' lives in danger. Because now what, they're, they're defenseless from China. And a couple months ago, I think everybody was really freaked out about China trying to you know, take over Taiwan. And we were all on the edge of our seats here and they're making all these new man-made islands and bumping up military exercises. And well, now that we know that they're 
nuclear missiles are filled up with water instead of fuel and all the hatches, well, a lot of the hatches like just don't even open. They're just ka-chink. Their nuclear arsenal is all but moot. And, uh, and for $15,000, $15,000, Sal, we have free enlistment bonuses. Better triple that. You could have stayed out of jail and just completed your military service and then signed up for another highfalutin cool maybe Navy SEAL job, whatever, and made $45,000 in a bonus. Three times what you got paid for from China. And guess what? You wouldn't be in jail six more years in the service being a good cat. Being a fantastic American now, you fucked it all up. You fucked it all up for $15,000. You fucked it all up for a 2016 used Toyota Camry. You sold out your country for a car you could find on any used lot and buy with no money down. Hey there, Bubba. Are you ready to sell out your country but not your bank account? Well, you come on down to the PRC, the People's Republic of Cars. Getting my first vehicle at the PRC was easy where only a handful of military documents can have you driving away in a Honda Accord that still smells like the pizza that it used to deliver. All they needed was a copy of my government ID, a copy of my military access card, with the espionage layaway program with just a document a month. You can secure yourself a college student's previous daily driver. My unit's upcoming deployment rotations and where they're going. Sell your soul for a 2015 Kia Soul here at the PRC. Oh no, I think I made a mistake. I need to get out of here, into the sky! So bring all your military documents down to the PRC today, where freedom is just an illusion. But what consequences is Zhao facing because he sold out, you know, the United States military and put U.S service members in danger. What, what consequences is he facing? What smack on the wrist is he facing? Well, it's all totaling up. The sweet, sweet taste of justice is a $5,500 fine and 27 months in jail. Now, if my math is mathing and he's being fined $5,500, but he made $15,000 from spying on the US, that would mean he gets to keep $9,500? Come, come here, come here, military cats. All right, seniors, the officer ranks. Um, you know, normally, the pisses and moans from the lower enlisted about the uniform code of military justice is that officers, you know, get a light pee-pee smack for bad things. And then if we do an eh kind of bad thing, we get like kicked out and fined forever, right? You know, very light punishment for officers, very heavy punishment for enlisted men. Here, uh, it seems as though you flip the script and this isn't like he had a DWI or something. He sold documents to a foreign military. 27 months, that's, that's only three, that's three months longer than the shortest military contract you can sign, two years, two years. You're telling me that for selling documents to a foreign government, he's doing just three months more than the smallest, the, the shortest military contract you can sign up for? Bullshit. Bullshit. Let's talk about time. We'll talk about money in a second. We'll talk about time right now. Let's say that he signed four years. All right, he signed up for four years. And he's been spying for whatever. I say he finishes out the rest of his contract in jail. Like period, right? We're not even adding time onto this yet. We're just saying whatever you have left in your contract, Zhao, you are spending that time in prison for being a traitor. And then on top of that, I think we should take his original signing, his original contract, let's say it's for four years, and then add that onto it, right? So we got finish out your contract, and then what your original contract was for, add that time on, and there's your thing. So maybe like six years in prison, right? Four to six years in prison. I feel like that's fair. What, he gets probation after a couple years, and they kick him out, and he still has to like walk around with like a weird hat that says traitor on it. I'll give you a little something you can't take off. And then money-wise, let's talk about money-wise, all right? You don't get to keep the money you made spying. You, you don't get to do that. We take the $15,000 and we take all that $15,000. And that's just the start. That's just the start. Because whatever signing bonus he got when he came on, he owes that back. There's a lot of signing bonuses, five, 10, 15 grand. Let's say that he signed up, signed his contract, and you're like, hey, you're going in for six years, you get a $15,000 signing bonus. We should add that onto the 15 that he already owes the government, because that's what he got for being a trainer, right? So now we're at 30, we're at $30,000, okay. Those are rookie numbers. I'm just getting started. Now, the entire time that he was spying, 
we're just gonna say two years. Every single paycheck that he got from the federal government during that time for being a service member, that should be added onto whatever else he owes. And let's see, he's like an E3, E4. Let's just say two years, approximately like another $50,000. So $80,000, $80,000 is what we're starting at. That's what we're starting at. $80,000, finish off your contract, and then however long your original contract was for, you continue to serve that. That's, boom, there we go. Now we're talking fairness, right? Now we're telling people, hey, maybe, you know, spying for a foreign government while you're in the military and putting their lives of all your brothers and sisters in arms uh, in danger, maybe maybe not a good look. Now, I, I read an article and I couldn't find it, so grain of salt here, I'm not sure if this is 100% true or speculation, but I read in an article that Young Zhao here, well, he didn't wasn't aware that the bad Chinese man was with the Chinese government trying to steal these documents and one up the United States in that way. The Chinese agent portrayed themselves as a a corporate person that was trying to gain information on what the United States wanted so then they could create, uh, let's just say Boeing. Let's just say that this Chinese agent pretended to be somebody from you know the Chinese version of Boeing and saying, hey, listen, Navy guy, we, I'm not a bad guy. I'm not here for any government. I'm here for a part of a corporation. And we just wanna get a leg up on our corporation competition, right? We just wanna beat the competition. This is all staying civilian. This is just businessy stuff. This isn't for a foreign government or military. This is all just for businessy stuff so I can get a leg up on the competition and here's a couple bucks. Let's say that that's true. Let's say that the Chinese agent portrayed himself as corporate bro and made Zhao think that he was just like, hey, you know what, you're not giving this to a foreign government, you're just giving it to a business to get a one-up on other businesses. Gather round. Gather round, my young, beautiful military members. If someone, anyone, asks you to give them military documents and they'll pay you for it, that's a spy. Not every spy is James Bond walking around with a license to kill and some hot bitch with triple D tits just masturbating and banging his way through explosions and car chases in an Aston Martin to where he goes to big luncheons and it says spy on his chest and blinking lights. You know what I mean? Do I make you horny, baby? Like, oh, oh, I'm an economic advisor in a suit and tie for Chinese version of Boeing. I just need some of that. Yeah, that's how they get you. Or they've already got a friend turned in the military in your unit that's already spying. He's like, hey, hey, listen, I know you're my buddy from my military unit. You wanna make some extra money? Just give me some of those little, those little things over there that I'm not supposed to have. Give me those and I'll hook you up. I'll take you out to dinner a couple of times. And then he takes that and gets it to an actual asset. What, what ever happened to cyber awareness training? Come on! It's not gonna be a big red flashing sign that says spy. It's gonna be a subtle way for them to degrade your integrity. And then once they've, once they've compromised your integrity, now they're like, oh, hey, listen, if you don't do this for us now, now we're gonna tell somebody. We're gonna tell them that you were spying. No, yeah, fucking bullshit. So be careful, be smart, don't be stupid. And you won't end up like Zhao over here. A traitor, a piece of shit, whom I don't even know if he should even stay in the United States. Like what's gonna happen? He's gonna get out of his prison sentence and then just be like a part of American society again, you fucking traitor. You get, I figure he's got two things. He's got two things. He's got only two paths. One, he stays in the United States, realized that he made a mistake, and then forever tries to make up for that by being the best American that he can, all whilst living with the fact that he is a traitor. Listen, you don't get to be sad and sit down and cry at a bar, be like, man, everybody keeps calling me traitor and hurts my feelings. You're a fucking traitor. You fucked up. You deserve every little bit of that. And you have to work that off. You don't get back for free or two. Go to fuck China. Get the fuck out of here and go to China. You already fucked up, man. You already fucked up. This honorable discharge, you're on a fucking watch list. Nobody, drug, nobody trusts you or likes you. Just go to China. And by the way, good luck with that. I'm sure that they're gonna love somebody they can't trust like being in their country. They don't watch you or just off you or treat you like shit and throw you in the slums. They're not gonna take care of you. You're fucked. But at least over there, you won't be seen as a traitor. They might see you as like some sort of like, oh, I tried his best and you know, the American pig dog. So you either stay here and deal with it or get the fuck out. Cause I got no time for traitors. All right. Best way to support the channel is go to angry-cops.com, get yourself a shirt or some stickers.
Ooh, ah, nifty. Don't be a blue falcon. Like this fucking turd was. All right. See you next time, weirdos. Well, Pat, I had to shoot everything again because the fucking sound sounded like shit, so fuck me in the ass.